What's going on, folks? Happy Sunday. It's, uh, you know, a um, Sunday night. I recorded uh, an episode earlier on this on the weekend with my uh, friend Ethan. And after he's like, you should talk to my friend Trey. He's a great guy. He plays football for the university. Or no, excuse me. He plays for Houston Baptist University. Trey Fluellen. Nope. Am I saying that right? Trey Fluellen. Yeah. It's, he's a six foot two, 207 pound sophomore safety that plays for Houston Baptist University. He's from Gilmer, Texas. And he just has an incredible story. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm really looking forward to talking to him. So it should be a great time and never met him in person, but, uh, it's going to be a good time. Um, I'm obviously riding high on the Buffalo Bills win, you know, played a hell of a game against Lamar Jackson, the Ravens. So we're on to the AFC championship game against the chiefs. We're going to Kansas city. Um, yeah. So this is going to be really fun. I'm, uh, really looking forward to talking to him and just hearing more of his story, how he is. Um, um, yeah so more of a story and just how he got to where he is and you know what makes him more than just an athlete you know because often we attach ourselves to these job titles so yeah here we go trey what's going on man can you hear me can i hear you oh you know oh my my volume wasn't on uh speaker can't seem to be hearing you i'm not muted can you hear me yeah i don't i don't hear anything you're saying man i don't know why maybe the audio is uh maybe you're not connected to the audio No, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna get this resolved. You're get eight. Uh, I'm gonna text you my number. So uh, sometimes this thing can be faulty. Oh, and he left. Okay, we're admitting them again. It's connecting to audio. Did not catch. It says you did not connect to audio. I don't know why. No, it's you're not. You only have the video on. Let's see if I can do anything on my end. Can you hear me now? Oh, we're good. Oh. There, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I messed it up on my computer. Hey, uh, no worries. It, it happens, man. Like I, when I first started <laughs> virtual episodes, it was like, I would bring someone in and then I'd be like, start the episode. And then, you know, they can't even hear me. And then I'm like, Oh, well, this is awkward. And yeah. then start over. But no, it's, Hey, I'm, I'm it's crazy. Yeah. Um, but Anyways, man, how how are you doing? How 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 are things? Everything, yeah, everything's everything's good. Um, I'm just out here. Uh, I I guess you could say chasing my, um, you know, growing up. You don't really. I I didn't really understand what like, you know, college was like or anything. Um, but got here, you know, showed told my little brothers, you know, how I thought it was, but it's a totally different aspect now than it was so everything's good what about you man things are good man i'm uh i'm pretty yeah. hype i'm a big bills fan and oh, really uh, so you know we're in the afc championship game so there's not many complaints on this end but um well, i kind of i kind of gave you a brief intro before i let you in but why yeah. don't you tell the, the listeners like 
who you are. I kind of <clears> tell them, you know, you play football and just, I don't know, just a little more of a backstory. Just so like, cause yeah. So, uh, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, <laughs> you, you know, oh, I thought you're, okay. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Uh, yeah. So what's up guys. Uh, I'm Trey Flewellen. Uh, I am a sophomore here at Houston Baptist. I'm from Gilmer, Texas. Um, small town. It's in East Texas, um, which is called Beast, Texas, all around. So uh, very, very football native. Um, we love football. Where I'm from, everybody plays football, um, even the girls when we're younger. So yeah, um, I'm from a 4A division, Division II high school. Came here to Houston Baptist, which is the Division I in the Southland Conference. I'm um, out here chasing my dream and trying to, trying to do, you know, better in my life than all the other kids from back home. Um, trying to make a difference and impact um, to basically be known for, just be a leader in, in the, you know, in the game. Uh, I just want to be the best and uh, encourage others to, to be the best. I love that, man. That's that's really powerful stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. leading by example and just putting your best foot forward and paving the way for the next pe- the next people in line. That's what it's about, really. Um, right. So, uh, you know, I recently talked with Ethan, and you know, that's how we kind of got acquainted with each other. He's like, "You got to talk to my friend Trey." I'm like, "Dude, I'm all <laughs> about it. Thank you for like, you know." Yeah, yeah. Ethan, Ethan's a cool dude. We've we've grown so much together. Yeah, he. I mean, same thing with him too. Is like someone, a mutual friend, linked us, and he's like, "You should have him on the podcast." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." I'm I'm open, like I'm an open minded person. Awesome. So that's awesome. But um, you you're talking about you know football. Like, what was? Because I'm not. I've only been to Texas a few times. So like the culture of Texas football growing up. Is it just like very competitive, or is it just? I don't see, know. Is it? Is it? See, I, I would give you so many more examples if I've been to other states and seen how the football run. But I, from what I see or what I've grown up by, you know, everybody eats, sleeps, and drinks. You know, football. Uh, the kids they either grow up wanting to play in the NBA or in the NFL. Um, just to make a better way, like uh, I have no idea what I would be doing without football um it's basically you know been a blessing to me and my family and my life got me a scholarship um got me tons of scholarships um to just go out and play the game that i love um, it's just a way of life you know you you grow up you grow up you grow up around something for so long um that it just comes into you or it, it begins you and in, begin to inherit the um the fever of it so yeah that's that's amazing and is that kind of what inspired you to get to where you are today just you fell in love with the game at an early age and then you just sort of like I love playing this game and I'm good at it or just it was just that's like you're you saw as a way out like right curious right so um growing up uh, I, I didn't have it I'm not trying to say I had it any worse than anybody else but growing up um you know there was times where we had to get food from the church or, you know, there, there's just different things that happened in my life um, that I had to get a distraction or um, think of a better way of life to eventually make an impact for my family and um, provide for my family. Um, and so I don't know if Ethan's told you about the tattoos that I have on my wrist. Um, they say never change. Um, wow. And it's never, it's never changing on, uh, what I want in life or my dream and my goal. And my goal is to, well, first off, I'm the first kid to go to college out of my family, but my goal is to go to college, um, have my little brothers behind me, you know, go to the league, um, and basically pay for my family because I know, or give back to my family and the community. Cause I know that my family growing up um, had it hard um, and, I, and I know there's tons more, but um, what I went through was very different as a kid. And so that just it always encouraged um, me to want to be great or as you can, I, I don't, 
there's a lot of different people that say I'm very different. Um, I don't party. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Um, there's there's so many different things that other people qualities that other people have, but um, I'm very different, and I like to I like to know that I'm different. I like to think that I'm different, um, and so that that's also you know anytime that I anytime that I you know try to go out and have fun with my friends or anything like that, I, I feel like uh, I mean there's nothing wrong with a good time, but I feel like I'm getting behind on my dreams. So I've shaped my body to feel destined for, or to be destined to set up my future for success or anything else, you know? But like I said, like growing up, we didn't have it all. So I'm trying to make a better, better way to where I can, you know, we can. I love that. And I think it, it just seems like you're very laser focused and I really admire mm -hmm. that just and I you know you're saying you're different and I can just talking to you for 10 minutes or so already I could mm -hmm. just already give that get that vibe from you just like you're yeah. you're about you're about your business and you know <clears throat> you, you're you play on the field shows for it so that's right tons of, tons of uh respect to you and just mm -hmm. you know I'm you know I'm, I'm rooting for you I, I watched you know some tape of, <clears throat> you know, I did my homework and yeah that, you know, there I, you I, go I yeah you, you're on your way, man. So just know you, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for you in, over here in Buffalo. And so that, that's, that's amazing. I, I love to hear that. Like, I appreciate it. Cause ex especially when it comes to the party and stuff, cause I, I think a lot of young people get really distracted with it and it's just that's like, right. and especially like, you know, someone in your position could it very easily kind of, you know, get cocky or have an ego and just be like, Oh that's yeah. Right. Like I know what, you know, I'm the man. Like, and then right. just be not focused. Cause I guess one another thing I want to talk about too is you know the preparation you know that yeah. goes into getting ready for a game each week. It's not just yeah. like you show up and play. It's like the, I I mean I guess a question for you know is it maybe your daily schedule? But for sure, it, it, it's it's yeah. I mean I mean I, I I'm I never played college athletics, but like I know yeah. I've heard you know it's it's the the real grind. It's no joke. So yeah. So yeah. That that first thing that you were just talking about about the kids. Um, basically, or the, the people getting cocky or, you know, getting a little fame and, and going crazy. We, I call that lost in the sauce. And uh, that's that's 100%. one person that I don't want to be. Um, like I said, I, well, I didn't tell you, but I'm the middle child. There's nine of us, five, uh, six boys and three girls. Um, so I did not, you know, it wasn't easy growing up. There's four, four different moms. I, I have my mom with two um, other siblings, one brother, one sister. And they're both older, so I'm the youngest in my mom's side, but my dad's side, I'm the middle child, so I got to see it all. Um, but we call that we call that lost in the sauce, and uh, you know, being a middle child, uh, I don't know if you know any other, but you can those those child those children are always the one who you know sometimes sit back and they're they're in the middle of both. They sit back and they they get to see what goes on, you know. Um, I always told my dad, uh, Dad, I want to be different than everybody else. Um, I want to make a name for myself you know my, my brothers they had a chance to go play college ball but they you know they didn't fulfill that or you know succeed in, in doing that because you know there were some minor steps in the way so I, i'm chasing their dream for them you know i'm chasing my dad's dream for them but uh other than that there's some people from back home um that i know could have been great um but uh, they got lost in the sauce um they went to the nfl came straight back home and, and, and back home is where you where you don't want to go because you get you know you get comfortable with being you know you get comfortable with with being at the top and what you know you can only be at the top for so long if you're if you're not training you know if you're not doing anything you know you get lost in that sauce you start to sit back and those kids who who when when people make it out from my town or ethan's town or anything like that they usually end up back to where they came from and uh me and ethan are out here trying to do that um, chase God is the first thing that that we have on our minds uh, at all times. Um, chase God together and you know succeed and in, in, in life and succeed as as people and encourage others to be the best at all times. Um, because there's not too many people out here that want to see you do great anymore. Um, there's people in this world that will tear you down because you're doing better than them or you have the spot that they want. Uh, and it and it sucks, I know, but you know, just to be that person to make a difference, 
Um, you can change somebody's life easily, easily. And I'm willing to do that uh, while chasing my dream. Man, that's, that, that's powerful. Like that's, that, I mean, I appreciate inc- it. incredible stuff, man. Like that, that's, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think I've talked with anyone that is like as sharp as you are at like it. your age. Not that I'm like some old head out here. I mean, I'm 26, but like, I'm like, you seem very aware and like, you know where you want to go and you're doing, mm-hmm. you're going to do whatever it takes to get there. Yeah, you know? no, for sure. So no doubt. 19 super, years old. That's a, wow. That's, I mean, I guess yeah. some people mature, but you, you, the way I, the way, the reason I say aware and observant is just cause like you've seen examples of people that, yeah, you know, have been before you. And it's like, you learn from <clears throat> not, it's, it's, it's very not, it's not common that people learn through uh, other people's mistakes or mm-hmm. so I think maybe that's just the middle child awareness. So yeah, <laughs> that's no, for sure. For sure. That That's All great. Right. Is, is that, is that what, what you say is your biggest like inspiration though, that keeps you going like through the hard times? Cause obviously football is, you know, training for it and playing is not an easy thing, just like your family and that bigger goal. Or is it, right. is it My everyday life? everyday life okay um no um i as i said I, like i told you about you know my family and, and us not having it all um but at the same time when we we didn't have it all we had what we needed to survive and we had what you know i, I lived with my mom until i was a freshman i would go see my dad on the weekends all nine of us would be in that one house um but when i was back home my mom was a single single parent um trying to go to college but wasn't able to because she didn't have the money. So she was busting her butt every day um, to provide for us. Um, and that's the part where the, the church comes in. Uh, they, they played a major role in our life, but uh, I, I'm chasing this dream to give back to my parents, uh, the life that they want to live. My dad got kicked out of the house when he was 16. Um, and so for me to go to college was, was a big step for us as a family. Um, because we've never had that before. Um, and I know that other people out here, like I got a couple roommates, you know, um, chasing the same dream. But uh, as far as, as far as why, what's my why? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's to live for him and my God, uh, like my, my dad and my God and my family, um, you know, because you're not guaranteed. I mean, nobody, nobody's guaranteed tomorrow. Uh, you aren't guaranteed the next minute. You're not guaranteed anything. Um, but what you can do is praise him all the time uh, and encourage others to praise him. Um, but yes, my answer is to um, give back to my parents and give back to my family. And, uh, and, and I feel like this is my purpose. Um, I, I wouldn't be in the game this long. Um, and you know, take, I'm not saying I take anything for granted. We're not perfect, but I wouldn't be in the game this long you know, with, without knowing that I, this is what I have to do to provide for my family. Um, I'll get an education here. I have a backup plan, but you know, but I don't go off no plan B. I don't, I don't do that. You know? So, yeah. I love that. I mean, I, I don't think you're, you're not going to need that plan B just based on, and I haven't even, you know, seen you play really a whole lot. So like, but I, I just from, you kind of get a sense of some, who someone is just, but from talking to them you know yeah. and um yeah you're just you just seem like you're all about you know and i you know like i, I can't say it enough i respect that so much and i think i, I think it. it's amazing because you just don't i mean not everyone has that type of dedication so um mm-hmm. kind of transitioning though well so was this past season you played your sophomore season or is this that considered your freshman because you said you're a sophomore right so this season did not count um, okay. It would have been my sophomore season if we would have played over four games, but we played, so we played uh, North Texas, La Tech, Texas Tech, and Eastern Kentucky um, were the only four games that we played this year. Um, and so I will get an extra, this year doesn't count to any eligibility or anything like that. So I'll get an extra sophomore year or basically a real sophomore year. Um, so I'll be a sophomore on the field and a junior in classroom. Okay. So that- yeah. I was because I'm I'm really curious. I mean, because I, I was looking up just like what how you know how your 
season went and I saw you only played four games and mm -hmm. what was that like? I mean, obviously with the whole COVID thing, you know, was yeah. it, was it weird? Like you guys got tested and if you kind of like how it is with the NFL and, you know, you other sports, like right. you tested positive, you can't play or, or, yeah. or were people not really thinking about it and they just wanted to go out there and play or what was the vibe yeah. like? Um, so it, it was very, very weird at first. We had to get used to it. Um, there was, you know, it, it was not so normal. You know, you, nobody's ever think, nobody ever thought that we were going to have this thing going on or anything like that. Um, but there's just some things that you have to do. Luckily, I caught Corona before we came back for um, football to start training for spring ball or for the year fall ball. Um, and so once you get that Corona, you don't have to test for three months. Um, and so I didn't have to test until I think it was the last game. Um, but uh, for everybody else, we test three times a week um, and, it, and it sucks. But like I said, there's just things that you have to do when playing this game. And also like on the sideline, you know, you had to wear a mask and that, and that's so weird um, because football, football is a, is a fan sport, you know, football is a love sport. Like, you know, people, people are diehard or, you know, people love to watch football. And so it was very weird. We didn't have as much fans or, you know, it, it was, everything was off. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, I didn't let it affect me. Um, we didn't let it affect us. But we still, we still play our hardest. Um, still chasing the same dream. So I, I don't, I, I have a problem with it being um, because football is meant to have fun. And some people don't think that they're having fun um, because they can't um, have the fans or, you know, have the same love that they get from everybody else or anything. They don't, it's not the same with this Corona stuff, but um, I feel like after this thing's over, it'll feel a lot better than before. So, yeah. That's really interesting just to hear that. I mean, would, would, would you consider it to be kind of a positive experience? I mean, I, I guess, you know, it is good that you got some games in this year, but I mean, obviously much different circumstances and kind of like an adversity type thing in a sense where it's like, you kind yeah. of have to take your, you know, cause without fans there to fire you, you know, kind of give you that extra um, yeah. boost. Like, it's like, you kind of got to yeah. put yourself in a different mindset. Would, would you consider it to be a positive experience or just you're kind of like, you're like, you're just ready for the next season? Yeah. Well, I mean, they're kind of both in that situation. Um, you can't, you can't be negative on yourself just because of, um, you know, one season that, you know, God put this in the way. So, you know, we, we got to do our thing to, well, the devil put this in our way, but we got to do our thing to, um, you know, just surpass it and stay, you know, with him. But uh, there's, I'm not going to say it's negative. I'm not going to say it's positive, um, but we did learn from these um, experiences. We did learn from all these things, um, which is, which is what we do. Um, and so, I mean, like I said, it was weird and all, but I feel like later it will be better. You know, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, getting to playing games is only going to benefit you just from. Right whether it's just like more experience or there's just more to go off of, you know? Yeah. And, and it's weird because you, you can't really tell, you know, uh, if you were, if you were down there, you would understand more, but like nobody knows how I, I feel like real football is um, like football, you know, there, there's an advantage when you have home, home field and stuff like that. There's always advantages. And, and so I guess this year there was none of that. Um, I mean, everybody was, you know, stoked to play, but just the, like I said, the football is a love, a love sport. Um, and, you know, we love to hit, but we love the fans too, and the band and and all that. So yeah. Absolutely. I mean, there's just a lot of variables that go in, and it, it just, it just <clears throat> like I don't have much experience playing it, but like I just from what I see and just from talking to friends that have more, you know, it, it, it's a love sport and it's like, it takes a lot of dedication and hours yeah. and um, preparation 
you know, <clears throat> yeah, on, and, and, on and off the field. And that's kind of sure. my next question is like, <clears throat> one thing I'm really curious and I, I want kind of the listeners of the show to, to know just cause um, some may be an aspiring, you know, college athletes or just athletes in general or whatever it may be, but kind of go through like a rundown of like a daily schedule if you could, just cause like, I know, it's well it may be a little different with covid but like i guess a typical schedule like like i know you got lifts and, yeah. and it just it's jam-packed i would imagine yeah so i always pick the early things because i like waking up early um i feel like they're the bird gets the word um so here in the next few days we'll start workouts and stuff um usually we have workouts at six um but you know there, there's a lot more people coming back I guess now and so we have to change the workouts like later um, to have more time and so uh, I'll wake up six o'clock in the morning work out at seven um, after workout go to breakfast breakfast to your room um, after I after I go to my room I'll take a shower get ready for school um, and that's that's at 10 I'll, I'll be starting class at 10 um, that would be my first class till 10.50. Then go to my next class, start at 11 or 11.15. Um, be there till 12. I mean, there's there's two classes. Then you go to lunch. I can pick whatever. You know, in college, there's no schedule. You make your own schedule. Um, you're the boss. You're the, you're the grown person. I mean, but uh, after lunch, I'll go back to my room and try to write down the rest of my schedule or, you know, write – you know, X things off my, my list and uh, go to, if I have another class that day, I'll go to that class, uh, which will be like three o'clock or whatever. And so um, practice is usually like five or like, we'll have like some type of team stuff, some, something, um, which is practice basically. Um, that'll be like five to seven or, you know, five to seven thirty. 30. Uh, after that, I go to my room or I go take a shower in the field house, then go get something to eat, um, go to my room, watch film, um, do all that, do my push-ups and all that. And then after I watch and do all that type of stuff, I uh, you know, say my prayers, uh, call my, my parents and stuff and tell them I love them and then get to bed and we're, we're on the road to the next morning. Same thing, wake up six o'clock and all that stuff. Wow. That's yeah. Talk about a jam packed being day. be yeah. in bed by you know, ten, ten forty-five. Um I suck at sleeping, so I usually fall asleep around eleven, eleven thirty. Yeah. I hear you, but that that's sometimes it's hard <clears throat> to pass out instantly like that. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean with, with your busy schedule, I, I appreciate you for finding time for me at least that's that means a lot to me <laughs> no i appreciate you yeah um uh just from talking with you 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 seem like you know you're definitely one of a kind you know you're the first uh trey fuel and um i'm not trying to like with this question i'm not trying to like i don't know i'm, I'm thinking too no, much no. It, but like are there any like nfl players that like you look up to or like call you know right people players that like kind of inspire you or you model your game off of off right. um so these past few years um i've basically trained um, with my best friend now who is blake lynch and plays for the vikings and uh i'm not saying i have favorite teams or anything uh he was undrafted um and when when he was undrafted he felt real dis- disrespected and i felt disrespected um just because he's my friend or whatever and stuff like that and so um he got picked up by the Vikings practice squad, um, you know, and I, here's what I told him, like, you know, Blake, it's Tom, it's Tom, you know, and he, he already knew um, he's been wanting to go to the league and play, play in the league and do all those things that, you know, kids dream of. And so if he, if he wanted to do something, he had to do something about it. So uh, after five games, um, he had worked so hard, made it to the, the, the actual, you know, roster played like two games and then started the last three games. Um, and so uh, that was pretty big. Um, that that was inspirational for me. 
um, not only for me, but for the other kids back home and for my family um, to see that, you know, if you work for something so hard and, you know, and it doesn't always happen, but if you work for something so hard and, you know, you do things right, um, good things do come to people who wait and are patient. Um, and I know that's not what he wanted to be, which is undrafted, but um, that's just how it comes. But at my position, my favorite player um, is, is Jamal Adams. You know, there, there, there's so many other kids out there. You know, I, I like, I like all DBs that are in the league. I have respect for all of them, but uh, Jamal Adams stick out the most to me. Um, he's the biggest leader in the room at all times, um, and he just made himself the player he is. You know, um, took those things from those coaches, grew up in Louisiana. Um, which was pretty cool because you know one of my friends here uh, is from Louisiana, from the same town, um, and so that was all pretty cool. So that's really that's really cool. I mean, uh, I'm I'm happy that uh, your friend Blake got a shot, and that, that just that that just shows the per, you know the perseverance and the hard work. Like kind of what you said though, just like you know you work hard enough at something and you are doing things the right way for so long, yeah. it'll, it'll eventually get noticed or yeah. perhaps an opportunity may arise and get to show the world your yeah. gifts. So, but I, I, from, from the, um, I think it was your senior year highlights, I think. Yeah. Uh, from Gilmer. Uh, I definitely get, you know, Jamal, you know, Jamal Adam vibe, just the way you are kind of like a ball hawk out there and hit people. Yeah. And, you know, you just, I appreciate it. yeah, you, you play the way you play. So. That, that's that's cool i good good stuff um yeah, i appreciate it do you, do you have like any because I, I know you're very focused with football and everything do you have any interests outside of football that like say i guess down the line like is like a bigger dream whether it's like i don't know owning real estate or just like there's oh, something yeah. you're really oh, yeah. interested in you know that like because i know like yeah. football is just probably just a piece of the puzzle right like right Right. That, that's one of the, you know, the dream, the goal um, to, to where I want to be at. But in that circumference, you know, and, and that amount of space, um, there, there's so many other things that I want to do. Um, before I graduate college, uh, me and Ethan, my friend Ethan, and uh, our, our other friend, which is Taylor, um, all want to have our real estate and commercial license um, to be able to, you know, to, to own some businesses and, and have land and have property to get started off. Um, there's so many other things um, that I want to do. Um, my dad owns a mechanic shop now. And so uh, I, I want to be able to buy him a, you know, own commercial and stuff like that and uh, buy him a lot and uh, put him on the line and stuff like that. But uh, other than that, I mean, Right now, I, I, I want to learn how to, you know, be in the stock market, and, you know, earn money from the stock market and stuff like that, which I, I want to be able to invest in so many different things. But um, I'm trying to find the right time to do it. And there's, you know, in, in college, you're, you're so booked up all day with work that I can't. I'm, I'm trying to find time, but I can't find time. Um, well, I'm not going to say I can't. I can find time. I just haven't found the right time yet, you know. Yeah. And so, I mean, yeah. I, and uh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say yeah, but that, that's okay. I mean, your folk like one thing I've really learned is just like it's okay to have your focus all on something else, and then when the I guess there's an opening in your schedule or just mm -hmm. there, it's not as hectic. Then that's when maybe you focus more energy or time on the. Yeah stocks or something else you know that's something i've kind of because you know when, when i was in school i was just juggling trying to juggle as much as i could and sometimes you wear yourself out you know and no, not that that's a bad sure. thing but like you know you sometimes you got to give yourself credit and like the pat in the yeah. back like i'm doing all i can right now and i want to yeah. do the best at like what's most important to me so mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm i'm sure you know one day that will definitely be something but i i think that's amazing that you did how you have just eyes set on bigger things than that's right because and i i think you know you, you definitely have the right head on your shoulders just because when the time does it. arrive you know i mean 
it's it's definitely not as common today but there definitely is like well i guess they're just trying to teach the younger generation just because like there's been a lot of famous athletes that have gotten these large contracts and they've gone bankrupt yeah. they just, they're not smart financially or they just right they have the wrong people in their corner so it's, it's yeah that, that was another thing i was going to talk about uh but you know you start talking and i for, I, I start talking and i forget but uh, <laughs> I, hear you. It's, it's I, I have a bad adhd and so it's hard to oh. focus on one thing for so long but uh so that that thing that you were just talking about you know there's somebody that my dad told me about um which can be a blessing to all of us um to hire a basically a money manager, I guess you would say, or somebody who knows how to help me manage my money. Um, I'm not always the best with managing money, um, but I, I do send money back home. But the money that I have for myself, I need to you know, learn how to separate it to where I can, you know, save up, you know, basically, you know, make, make a savings account and stuff like that. I, I have a bank account, but I want to be able to you know, live, live life when I'm, when I'm 45, you know, so there's, there's so many other things. I, I want to teach my brothers how to do all that stuff um, to, to be that smart when it comes to things like that. Um, my dad taught us how to change tire and stuff and, you know, change a battery out. Um, you know, there, there's so many other things that people don't learn nowadays um, because they're too caught up in, this gaming thing or you know whatever you know kids kids barely play outside anymore um i know that my kids will you know enjoy um what they have and be thankful for what they have um or else you know <laughs> there just won't be no i i just want people to, to learn the real value of life um, because nobody's guaranteed you know, anything and lead people in the right direction. Um, like I said, there's, there's always those people who hate on people for doing better than them or, you know, but uh, me and me and Ethan and me, Ethan and Dish, which is Taylor, um, want to be those people who change that, you know, there, there's so many other people that want to change it, but they're not going to say anything, um, which I want I want to say that. I mean, it's, it's, it seems that you have, you know, Ethan, you know, your friends, Ethan and Taylor, you guys seem like you guys are pretty tight and just have the right mindset. And I think it's so important to have the, you know, people in your corner that want the same things or have the same values in life. So that's great to hear. Just, um, yeah, it's, shoot. I had a thought, but I, like, I, like, like you mentioned, I I totally, I I totally lost, and it was something good too, but, uh, come back. Yeah, but um, what 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 is your what is your goal? Oh well, normally people don't ask me questions, but thank you. I I yeah, that's, that's different. so I mean, it, this has definitely been a weird year for me because like yeah. I was working in music and like doing mm-hmm. traveling around, managing artists, and you know doing concerts and stuff like managing yeah. tours, just like making sure they got paid and. You know, because there's a lot of money at stake on the road. Not that I was working with a ton of high profile acts, but I was working my way up. And then obviously COVID happened and concerts aren't a thing. So I, you know, I, I found a job in between, but just to keep it going. But I, I, I started that I, I had I had a pod, an idea to start this a podcast for a long time. I didn't know what it was going to be called, whatever, whatever. I was struggling more, mostly out of fear, to be honest, just like, man, like, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing, I, you know. But then I got to a point where I was just talking to some of my best friends and like, you just got to do it, Ryan. I'm like, I, I was like, F it. You're right. So I, you know, right. utilized my network and had people, you know, make graphic for it. And I did a whole thing. And so really my ultimate goal with this uh, uh, show is just to give people a voice and a platform, like such as someone like such as yourself who may not mm-hmm. know like why you're doing what you're doing. <clears throat> just kind yeah. of showcasing like, you know, that these incredible people are more than their job titles. There's more layers to those people. And just kind of, I mean, ultimately I just kind of want to help people whether like someone gets something positive out of this episode or, yeah, you know, I, uh, cause for me personally, podcasts are very like therapeutic. So like, I kind of want to pay it forward 
Yeah. But I mean, as far as life goes, I, I, I mean, financial freedom is definitely a big goal of mine, but I'm, I'm yeah. not exactly yeah. sure where I'm going to get there. You know, I'm just yeah. kind of like, maybe I just need to refocus a bit, but like, I know that, uh, like I'm, 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 I don't know. I'm kind of in this point in life where it's like, I'm in a very, uh, what do you call it? Predicament. And, yeah. Well, and, well that too, but just like, I'm kind of flowing with life. Like it's like, I'm, Oh yeah. You're I'm, just, I'm, you're I'm just going hard, but like, I'm agreeing with the steps. Yeah. Like that. it's part of the process in a sense. So, um, I feel that. yeah, I mean, I was, I was really caught up in the music scene and then obviously that took it. So it's like, I'm kind of reevaluating. I have a huge passion for sports and music and, you know, you know, entertainment, like movies and all that. So I, I kind of know enough people in all those realms that I don't know. I mean, I don't know. What I, was, uh... I, 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 like I have a huge interest in like helping others and like servicing. Like, I think that's yeah. one of my gifts. like servicing as in like taking care of people. Like I love, like For sure. my biggest joy of uh, touring was just making sure the show went successfully in that the act like the person I was working for the artist that like they are having a good time and they're like happy you were know, you born winter. in March what's that were you born in March no you, I was born you, in July you sound, you sound like me oh <laughs> sound like me, I'm, I'm a cancer man I'm oh. I'm born in July but, but uh you, you talked about you talked about movies and stuff like that uh, yeah and, and music and all that so you like mass media and stuff like that yeah. Um, that's actually my major right now um, to do broadcast. Uh, it's focused on broadcast and uh, communication right now. Um, so the plan B is to finish here with a degree and uh, after the NFL, go to broadcast on ESPN and Sports Center and stuff like that um, and have a side gig at, as a podcast part, um, which is which is pretty awesome that, you know, you're you're basically talking the same kind of music that I'm talking right now. Um, it's music to my ears to hear that you're doing the the media part um, because there's not too many people out there um, that you know, think that they can make it in the movie part or the podcast thing. And so to see you uh, to see you chasing that it's pretty cool, pretty in, in, inspirational. Hey man, thank you. That means a lot. I mean, it's. Sometimes, you know, yeah. along the way you get a little, uh, not sidetracked, but you kind of hit a little bumpy. Yeah. Or it's just like, you're kind of like, what am I really doing this? But then like hearing words like that from you, it's just like, yeah, you know what, no matter oh, what, for I, sure. I going, you know, and you know, keep going. We, we, we talked what on like Friday and we were just like, yeah, Sunday. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And here we are, yeah. and, you know, it's not like, um, so I, I, I definitely like really appreciate all that. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad oh, that sure. we're able to connect virtually, you know, just like on for sure. the same wavelength at least. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's refreshing. I, I think, I think it's cool though, that you have the, like the sides, like the, the next phase kind of like after the NFL, yeah. like, I yeah. like, cause I mean, it's something to think about, you know, cause I mean, Oh, realistically you know the 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 the, the um <clears throat> the the length of like a pro career i mean you, you know you're lucky if you get two years yeah or i mean and if you you're lucky enough to stretch it out to 10 that's only 10 years that's right. you know, by the time that's up you're still like early 30s you know yeah you know, for sure plenty of life in front of you so i think that's great only, that only the the great ones only the great ones survive in that that game so that's what i'm trying to be different as um, not settling for good uh, and extending to the full amount of great. Um, nobody's perfect, um, but I'm trying to get as close as I can um, to live the the happiest life and, and give back um, to those who gave. Um, there's there's another tattoo on my body um, that I want to talk about. Um, I know you didn't ask, but um, this tattoo right here um, is my most meaningful or one of my most meaningful um this one is basically this one um this is 428 1945 um which is the birthday of my grandpa um he's still with us um but i, I had to get this um, because I, I felt it meant a lot 
my mom was adopted in high school um, by this young man um, and his daughter, which is Angela, which is my aunt, uh, has done everything on her power to, you know, get, give back to me and my family. Um, this, this dude right here has watched me grow um, from a boy to a young man to a man um, and done anything um, he could to keep me positive and on my feet, um, as well as my mom, my sister, my brother. Um, but I, I got this man's um, birthday on my arm because, uh, you know, there, there's so many people in this world that we don't hear of that can be inspirational. Um, but I, me as a young African American, um, there's a lot of things, a lot of stories that you hear growing up um, that you know are sick. And, and this this dude is is a white man. Um, who made sure that we are equal, um, made sure that I, I feel loved and you know, feel the same as everybody else. Um, and, and there's so many other people that do the same. And I'm not trying to bring race or anything to and do that. Um, but this man has done, you know, scrape, scrape food off his plate so that we can eat, you know. Uh, as, as, as far as my family, um, their last name is Denton. My last name is Fuella. Um, you can just count us all in on that. Um, you know, he, he's done so much and that's another part that I wanna do um, is give back to him, what he gave to my mom um, when, when he didn't have to. He, they grew up two bedrooms in the house with, with seven kids. Um, so, it, you know, it's an inspiration, inspirational thing to hear um, that somebody, you know, cares for your, loved ones as much as you do and did anything they could to provide um, and so he and my Mimi are still alive and still going strong um, I, when I go back home I train and let him watch me um, because you know I want him to be with me on this journey he'll be with me no matter what um, on this journey um, no matter how long it takes or anything uh, until I give back to him so uh, he sounds, he sounds like an incredible man. That's, that's, I, I see why that's tattooed on your arm just cause yeah. that's, that's incredible. That's, I mean, I, I'm not even really sure what to say that that's, he just sounds that's right. Th th just the way you described him. Um, you know, and cause I know from, you know, he said he was born in 40, you know, he, he, I guess back didn't have any business, you know, he had no business doing that and he just from the right. of his heart you know yeah it was right so that's wow that's it's, it's kind of I, I wish I, I wish i would have known more about your tattoos i would definitely would have questions prepared but if you yeah, want to no. if you want to talk about your other ones feel free that's um so i already showed y'all the never change one on my wrist um i already showed y'all this one told y'all about this one um this is about all of it uh, and it says, my family is my strength and my weakness. Through them, I rise, and only through them shall I fall. Um, basically meaning I have their back forever. And, you know, if they fall, I fall. Uh, if I can't pick them up, um, I, I I'll do anything to, um, you know, give them what they want. Um, I will always be there for them. Um, and I'm not talking just about my immediate family. Um, there's so many other parents and you know kids out there that had my back uh, when I needed help, uh, and so you know, like I said, um, I'm from a small town, and so usually the, those families are really close. Um, so we came close together, um, the whole town basically, um, and, and and they show love to you know. The ones who, who ones who aren't lost in the sauce show love to um, the old the older people and you know the real parents that show love to the ones who want to do something great sometimes. Um, and so, I got this, um, and I and I got this um, about two months ago um, when I was going through a surgery. Um, I tore my labrum versus Texas Tech, which is our second game. Um, first play on defense I still played through because you know I have to do whatever I can to provide for my family um, my family has to eat at the end of the day uh, they'll eat but I, I want them to you know be eating great 
Um, there, there should be no more, you know, grits and stuff like that. Uh, I'm trying to feed them steak. Um, and so I keep that on, you know, my back. I keep the weight on my back um, so that I can take some off of them um, and give them the life that they want. And so, yeah, those are my three tattoos. Wow. That's, I mean, I know people that they just get tatted just because, like, it's, I don't know that the some cool people thing. They, nah. yeah, well, they get tattoos that like it's like they don't mean anything to them it's just like kind of a feeling but that those yeah that, that's really powerful stuff and I think I think honestly that's just like a good reminder to remind yourself really because I mean it, it seems like all of those have such a big message on who you are as a person that you know even it, 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 it's like a daily a reminder for like if you know you're just like going through it and you're what feel like giving up or just having a terrible yeah. day you can look at you know your arm and yeah you know your arms and your wrist i don't i don't know if you can see this uh you can kind of see it right here the the patch and um, uh-huh. there's there's like a little patch right here um i i got this in high school as a joke at first um i had well somebody did it for me and it was it was just a joke at first um but my brother started to um, notice it and started to think that it was pretty cool. So I made it brighter, um, you know, and I, and I brought them together. My two younger brothers, um, this is Dylan and Rowan. Uh, one of them's a senior in high school right now. And then the other one's is a sophomore. Um, one's 18 and one's, one's 16. Um, and so um, I, I got this, I, I redid this and made it bigger um, to tell them uh, when I brought them together, I told them, you know, th- this will always keep us together. Um, just remember this when I'm, you know, when I'm, I'm at college, you know, that I have your back um, and that they have my back um, to never forget what, where you come from, uh, what, what's your dream or, you know, anything like that. Um, to remember what we went through as kids, you know, that my dad did anything that he could to provide for us, uh, you know, and, those those our older brothers had chances um, but they they weren't in the right mind to take those things um and and you know succeed and and do those things i'm not saying that they're not succeeding now but um, to do those things that they wanted to do um that we're living their dream right now um so this is to keep us together at all times um both my younger brothers have these uh patches of blonde hair and so um, that I, I guess you can say that's like a tattoo or whatever. Um, that's just something that uh, is a part of my life as well. It, it was a joke at first until you know my little brothers started to like it, and I started to you know think about you know how how I can be remembered by, for my little brothers and how, how the best big brother um, at the same time and, and be an, an inspiration to my um, brothers. And, and if anybody asks about why my hair is like this, I I go ahead and tell them um, because, you know, they should know. You know there, there's no reason why anybody should hold anything back anymore. Um, life's too short to sell it out, you know. And so this is a reminder of, you know, the dream that they're chasing. Um, they're, they're chasing right behind me. So I have to set the standard at all times. Wow. that's So it's not even – it's not just like – a fashion there's like there's just a no, uh, not for me yeah. um there, there's other kids that do that for a joke there's other kids that get tattoos for a joke and play around um at the same time i know kids who you know take that serious but these these things mean you know anything that you see on my body i have so many scars and stuff but that's just from growing up uh, and i'm thankful for all of them because you know, i learned from all of them you know? so yeah it seems like it's really shaped you to, you know, who you are today, just, and, you know, That's right. I, I, I love that how you're just so about your family and set an example for your brothers. Yeah. You know, it, cause they, even though they may not admit it, but they probably look up to you and, you know, that's a very big burden to, right. you know, to like carry just cause, you know, if you set the example, they may be like, Oh, well, he's doing that. I think then that's okay. But then, but really yeah. it's not, but like, but you have, you know, you have a good head on your shoulders and mm. you, you, you've, you've taken on that responsibility at a young age, you know, to, 
So I, I commend you for that too. That's that's great, man. Very good. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of the part of the show where I, I call it closing thoughts. It's kind of like yeah. kind of anything I guess you really want to say or just what you want to say like to end the show, just like whether it's a message or follow me on the gram or check out me, whatever, whatever you want to promote or no, I got you. It's just like, well, yeah, whatever you want to say, this is your time. Yeah. So like, boom, you know? Yeah. So like I said, I'm Trey Flellen, a uh, small town kid uh, with big time dreams. Um, I come from, you know, a big family, uh, but there's only so many that get those chances in, in of a lifetime. So if you're out there, uh, and you're listening to this, uh, don't ever forget, you know, where you come from, um, what your goals are, you know, and, and just when you think that you you need to quit or you need to stop, um, there's that climax that you get over um, to, to, to basically keep rising, you know, there, there's a climax, there's a up climax, and then, you know, you, you got to keep going. Um, don't ever, don't ever let somebody tell you what you can't do, um, no matter how, how late it is or anything, um, how small you are, um, how fast, how slow, how big, how small. Um, there, there's no limit to success or greatness. Um, you do that yourself. Um, you're, you're destined for greatness if you, if you care for it. Um, and don't ever stop. Don't ever stop. And uh, one thing I'll tell everybody is never change. Uh, my Instagram is uh, the Trey Fluellen. Uh, Twitter is Trey underscore for Wellen. Uh, y'all go follow me. Um, and if y'all ever need anything, uh, y'all can just message me and, and say anything that y'all need. Uh, I'm there. Um, and I appreciate y'all for coming my way to listen to this um, podcast. I had a great time on this. And so, yeah, hopefully we get a part two episode success, you know. So, yeah, um, don't ever forget my name. You'll hear about me someday. Hey, Trey, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show today and, you know, sharing your story. It's very inspirational to me, and I'm sure it's very inspiring to others that may hear it. So, Yes, sir. Can't thank you enough, and, you know, I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Hey, anytime you need anything, just let me know. You're the man. All right, man. I appreciate it.